let's not mince words. The fabulous poodles were neither fabulous nor poodles. But I always chuckled at the name, dug some of the music, and perhaps most important, it's 30 years later and I still remember them. So what is it about the name of a rock band? Well, if Air Supply managed to call themselves the Beatles, they still couldn't suck any less. Bruce Springsteen could have called his band Exit 9, and millions of expat Jerseyites would still follow them to the ends of the earth. But that's just my take. I've got a real expert on band names joining me today. Bart Bull is the author of Battle of the Band Names, the best and worst band names ever. Bull has worn a number of hats in his career. He was on staff at the birth of Bob Guccione Jr.'s Spin Magazine. He's been an editor of Vogue and Details. He sees the world a little differently than most people, which often makes his reporting more compelling and a little confounding for some on first or second read. Bart, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, but you know, the Fab- Fabulous Pools were great. Are they I saw them. I saw them live, and they were amazing. They were one of these bands that, you know, kind of punk rock could happen, and then inevitably New Wave happened the next afternoon, and these were like <laughs> these were like English musos that were smoking players and said, well, hell, the train is leaving the station, let's jump on board, and they were geniuses. It was great, you know. There were all these kind of New Wave bands like Graham Parker and Elvis Costello and all these pub rock guys that were smoking musicians, and they said, mm-hmm. hell yeah, you know, everyone's getting signed, I've been being a fucking pub rock musician forever, I'm, I'm, I'm climbing on this thing. And the Fabulous Poodles were amazing. They were good. I, you know, I remember them uh, because in seven, I, I actually read up a little bit because I, uh, I was curious. I, I'd never looked into them before. I see that they started about seventy four, seventy five, but I mean, they really. I guess they're. Oh, were they called the Fabulous Poodles then? Since you've done the research. As the, I think they. I think they. They started as the Poodles, and then they added Fabulous because of Frank Zappa. There's some connection to Zappa on that, and then huh. um, they put out their first album in seventy nine, which is why. Uh, 78, 79, I remember them because I was a freshman in college at working at the college radio station, and uh, I remember the album came along, and I had Think to check Tank. it out just just because of the name. Yeah, and uh, there was some great stuff on there. I, now, well, there was a cat in the band. I can't, he was not the, the, there wasn't the leader of the band. but was a, guy, a cat named Bobby Valentino, who later on in the English scene, I kind of ran across him a bunch of times, um, a fiddle player, violinist, and he was like the studio session violinist for anybody that wanted something that was like really hip and soulful and amazing and so he was just one of these guys and he had a kind of a pencil thin lounge lizard mustache you know like the the thing i've lately been rethinking new wave because i was a real punk rocker kind of guy i was like way early on it i was like one of the earliest guys in the states to be about that stuff you know and weirdly enough i was doing it in phoenix arizona with we were like inventing it just as it was being invented in New York, just as it was being invented in London, just as it was being invented in LA. There was something, there was some kind of weird spore in the air, and we were, you know, and we caught the virus, you know. But, and so New Wave was always like corny and weird. Yet, you know, like I said, these bands, you know, these bands with Graham Parker or, you know, Joe Jackson even, or Elvis Costello, all these bands, and they were kind of cloning a thing, but they had these great players who had mega chops, and not chops in that kind of, Frank Zappa, we know all the chords. They had soul. They were really soulful white guys from England, and I know that that's a total oxymoron. But um, in, in fact, they were soulful guys from England, and they were so. These, there were new wave bands. I realize now the kind of hip thing about new wave. I realized low these many years later was that you know punk rock has got too many rules. New wave was like everything that didn't fit into the rules of punk rock. Hmm. I go I go along with that. You know, it's funny you mentioned Joe Jackson, who has a a perfectly plain band name, uh, but um, what happened with that guy, man? I just thought he was a brilliant musician. He, he seemed to have, he, he not only, yeah, he, he, was a well, he, he, was a, he was a brilliant musician. He looked too much like Porky Pig and he was getting bald early on. And that's always an issue in the music business. You know, um, you better be a cute girl. You better be a cute guy, you know, and you better not be getting bald early on, which he was. And you better not look like Porky Pig. He was a brilliant musician. And that band, he had an original three-piece band. His original thing, those guys were smoking, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't they end up in the Fine Young Cannibals or something like that, you know? Again, new wave stuff, you know. I mean, that's, you know, the thing that's funny in retrospect for me to realize is like, yeah, you know, punk rock was amazing and all that. But 
new wave of actually where all of the freedom was, ironically, you know, how funny that is to think of in this late date, you know, but anyway. That was, I mean, that was some, no, that was some great music. Well, let's talk new wave. Let's, uh, let's talk new wave band names. Uh, let's, uh, so we, we at least touch a little bit on the book. No, uh, <laughs> screw the book, you know. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Nah. I'm not going to let you do that today. Tell me, nah. tell me about some of the better new wave band names and then some of the really bad new wave band names. Well, let me look, let me look up, let me look up on page 181 of my own book that I have seen for a week or so, um, in the chapter that is called Pink Pop, I, in the context of Think Pink. You know, anyway, the point with new wave band names is, I mean, you can almost tell that somebody was in a new wave band versus a punk rock name. You know, it, it was, it had a, it had a, a non-gnarly factor to the name. Mm. You know, um, you, you got called, uh, you know, there was a lot of the, first of all, you know, and that was true of punk rock in general, it was a, which meant it was a throwback, whether we acknowledge that or not, you know, the, the had gone away. And the things, now bands were called Kansas, you know, and bands were called Electric Light Orchestra, more than the Electric Light Orchestra. And they were called, right. you know, uh, Iron Butterfly, or they were called Black Sabbath. You know, and I mean, suddenly it was the Clash, the Sex Pistols, and then and so new wave. You know, but the thing about new wave bands is you kind of knew when someone was called the Good, the Nice, the Pop, the Go, the Go Go's, the Wet, the Beat, the English Beat. Then you knew that they were a new wave band, and you know that the lasted its half life was like a decade or something. You know, long after that stuff was over, people were on these shiny, shiny outfits with loosely knitted ties, you know, or, or loosely tied ties, you know, and, you know, the knack, you know, that was, the knack pretty much killed it for everybody, you know. <laughs> yeah, but the little girls understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't understand. That was the point. It was like, man, those are Jesus. Listen, there's no cute boys in this band. That's what the little girls understand. Anybody that ever wants to be in rock and roll had better get them a cute boy. That's all I can say. That's, the, that's probably the major secret to rock and roll. Did the uh, did the use of the uh, for the new wave bands go back to the Beatles with when that, that era? Yeah, I think it went back to I think it went back to beat groups. You know, it went back to a sense of you know I mean it was absolutely true punk rock and and thus of new wave and everything that was going on then. I mean there was this real sense of boy have we lost the plot? You know, sticks sucks. Uh, it's not spelled exactly. It should have an X in the sucks part, but um, or else whatever. But but as all band names basically should. Weirdly enough, there's some phenomenon about the X and the Z in band names. I don't know why we need extra X's and Z's in band names, but there are a lot of them. They, um, but in, you know, if you're gonna have an S in your band name, you better decide whether you want one or two Z's instead. But I I, I was assuming that was a copyright issue that that was they were protecting their name by. by no, it's a it's a it's a style issue, and it speaks of how little style musicians actually have. You know, I mean, musicians. We all think the musicians are cool and amazing and everything. It's like, well, then why do you have two Z's on the end of your name? You know, it's like that's the most naff, gauche thing in the world. But, but they do, and they think it's cool. That's the worst part about it. They go, whoa, dude. And you know what? If you if you hold our logo up by a mirror, it like looks the same way backwards. You know, <laughs> so that's that's how musicians are, and you can't help them. I don't. There's, you know, they just there's nothing you can do with them. You can. Talk to them about it, and they'll still think, yeah, but two of these is the way to go. So. Uh, Bart, can you think of any bands that would have been more successful under a different name, where the, meaning that the name hurt them, that we know them, but that they would, do, they would have done better if they didn't have whatever name they chose? Yeah, the Grateful Dead. Jeez, I mean, you know. But, you know, they finally have winnowed it down to the dead. You know, but really, <laughs> if, they had just, if they had just stuck with Rat Dog, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, no, it's just uh, you know. I mean, everything everything about the Grateful Dead has always been terribly embarrassing, and you know, and, and continues to be. And and I think that's that may be their great eternal contribution is just how embarrassing they are. But um, no, let's see. What would be? A, I mean, I mean, you know, the, it's it's a really ephemeral um, alchemical component because you got to ask yourself over and over again with great bands. I mean, the Beatles is that a great name or is that a really stupid name? You know, I mean, we can't, I mean, you finally can't parse it out. Is the Ramones and calling yourself, you know, Tommy and Joey and Johnny and eventually, you know, and, and Dee Dee, of course, and, and eventually, you know, you know, Bozo Ramon. I mean, uh, you know, is that a great name or is it just 
the context of everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 you know, the Sex Pistols is a great name. That's, that's a yeah. great name. Yeah. Um, you know, I, in this book, I've got a, we did, you know, there, I, I spent a lot of my advance on this book on um, establishing, um, like, a really, almost, a, a, you know, like a, a chemically pure laboratory where we, we did a lot of testing on, on what was finally the 99 greatest band names in the history of the universe, you know, and it was a, it was a really rigorous process. Yeah, tell us about that process. That that should be interesting. Uh, how did you, you know? How did you? I felt like on that? I felt like you know because you know I'm, I'm, I'm most of my life I've been a really serious journalist and I thought you know if I'm going to do this you know this kind of shall we say throwaway book or this book that one that visits a lot in the bathroom, um, uh, you know I think at least it has to have some kind of redeeming qualities for Western civilization. And really, and it ought to be sort of morally instructive. And, you know, in Western civilization, we use science. And so, you know, uh, we established kind of a germ-free laboratory. Um, no musicians were hurt in the process, I want to emphasize. You know, no, but, they were, no but some musicians. should have been. Well, uh, we lost a few drummers, but, but you know, as the oldest joke in, you know, as the oldest joke in, in, in band goes, there were musicians and drummers, too. Um, but uh, in any case, we tested, you know, rigorously and came up with, you know, what are finally the greatest names in the history of band naming, band nameology. You know, well, and that's, let, me, uh, let, me, let me share a few of these for people who haven't seen the book yet. Uh, and tell them uh, not to argue whatever they do. They just have to accept these. We're just ramming them down their throat. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're allowed to argue. That, that's why I would hope they would. Let's see. Now, some of these I kind of question, but some of these are obviously oh, brilliant. See, you're just starting the process. Well, I see how you are, Bob. That. You're just argumentative, man. <laughs> some of these are truly great names. I mean, the Sex Pistols, the Dell Vikings. I, always, I, I never got it, but I always loved the name Devo. Um, the Plastic People of the Universe. I believe that was the first Russian band, wasn't it? That, no, I think they were they were actually Czechoslovakian, or Czechoslovakian. yeah, I believe Czechoslovakian. Yeah, yeah, but they were behind well, the Iron Curtain. They were all behind the Iron Curtain, so they're all one and the same at that at that point. <laughs> <laughs> they were Soviet Flash. And the, yeah, well, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. You can even give credit to Buck Owens and the Buckaroos, which is oh, a that's great one of the greatest name. names in the history of the universe, okay. man. Aside from being one of the greatest bands in the history, probably one of the top five bands in the history of all of the history of, of Western and Eastern music, you know, but um, country, country and Western and Eastern music, but, but uh, Buck Owens and the Buckaroos, that's a great name. Come on, man. Uh, James Brown and the, fa- the Famous Flames, a great one. Um, well, there's several James Brown. He actually got two or three in the top 100, you know. Yeah, I think James Brown and the new, new, super heavy James Brown <laughs> review. Uh, how's, how's, that not, how's that not a great name, Bob? You can't argue with that. Come on, man. It is a great name. Hey, listen, I'm a huge <laughs> JB fan. I mean, there's no, yeah. no no getting around it. Parliament Funkadelic. I don't want to give them all away. I'm just I'm just kind of bouncing around. If you, of course, the Circle Jerks. Great, great name. Who could forget yeah. the Circle Jerk? Um, and um, don't forget the All Girls Summer Fun Band. Yeah, I saw that. That's, this, that's, I, no, this, this amazes me. Discotex and the Sex of Life. It is a great name. I'm a little surprised it made your top 99, though. How could, come on, man. That's as good. That's at least as good as the Del Vikings. It may be as good as the Sex Pistols. You, 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 come on, Bob. You would not want to be known as Discotex and the Sex of Life. <laughs> me? Come, come on, man. <laughs> but for the... For the purposes of this interview, if you would like to refer to me as Discotex for the rest of the interview, you may go ahead. <laughs> Where, and, 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 and the sexualettes are somewhere lurking in the background, you know, probably below the counter somewhere, below your desk. I, 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 I suspect the sexualettes will be barking before the end of our uh, <laughs> the, uh And, of course, the banana splits made the list. So I have yeah. complete respect for you for recognizing the greatness that is the banana splits. Oh, man. And you think of the, you know, and it's a, they're, they're kind of a tragic story, the banana splits, because, you know, the, the, the little dune buggies kept going over the edge of the pier one after another, <laughs> you know? <laughs> people, people think about Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and Richie Valens. They'd forget about the banana splits, you know? I, I cannot for the life of me understand why no one, I mean, of all the revivals, why has no one brought back the banana splits? I mean, because there's too much respect. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, they've, you know, they've done those sort of Buddy Holly Broadway plays, and there's a million Elvis imitators. But really, you know, how can you do the banana splits? 
They're, but I mean, I mean, they're, they're they're doing a movie this summer, Land of the Lost. They have to bring back the bananas. Yeah, but also nobody makes those, that exact same model of dune buggies anymore either. So it's kind of hard. No, that's fair. Well, let's try something else. I want to I want to run a couple of, couple of band names by you. Maybe you can give you can kind of rate them on a one to ten scale. And, and if you want to tell us something about the name or where they fit into the book, that would be great too. I'm, I'm uh, bad on those. I'm bad on those. You know, giving stars and everything. I would any any time I ever spent in the world of of movie criticism or rock criticism, I would always no. I'm not giving it stars or whatever the hell with that. So, but I will. You I can will respond. Comment in any way that you like. How about that? Cool. We'll do it that way. Cool. Uh, let's start with Culture Club. Well, you know, see, you know, it's that's a that's a that's a great name. It was a great band. I mean, you know, they probably all hated each other, but you know, think about it. Culture Club was amazing. Yet, you know, we're so. I mean, that goes back to this thing: is is the Beatles a great name? And you know, we're so bound up in the success and the failures and the you know uh, and the imagery of a band and what we think about them from you know from our black shirted Judas Priest T-shirt sensibility versus our you know, whatever. And, you know, I mean, Culture Club's a great name. Mm-hmm. How about uh, Meat Puppets? <laughs> oh, my. That's a funny one. Meat Puppets is a brilliant name. Um, I know this guy's from way, way back when I was in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was a, you know, rather well-known journalist in those days, and I was all that sort of stuff. And at one point... <laughs> Derek and the brothers came to me, and, and, and there, was actually, there was actually four of them in the band at that point. And they said, you know, we really want you to be our manager. And I listened to them. They went over there. They, they lived in, their, um, in, the, uh, in the back pool house behind their parents' extremely well-to-do uh, place in Paradise Valley. And they were, you know, they had Hustler magazine sitting around, and they were rocking out. And I go, well, you know, guys, I'm sorry. You're just never going to get anywhere. <laughs> you know, I have many tales of that sort, but that's a brilliant that's a brilliant name, and they were really always one of the greatest bands. Um, my dear friend Johnny D of, of, of Johnny D and R and B was was one of their biggest fans in the early days. A brilliant, a brilliant radio DJ who established a radio station in Arizona that was actually the, the could have been the path breaking radio station for what later became kind of punk rock and new wave and K rock format and that kind of thing. In any case. He, their very first live performance, went around and picked up every single flyer that they threw out from a balcony because they hand, they, you know, those guys sat around and with felt markers and, and drew monsters all day long. <laughs> and, and so I'm sure, and Johnny Z is like an obsessive collector, so I'm sure he has all of them to this day, and they're probably worth, you know, thousands or something, or, or thousands of pennies or something. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. Uh, and I interviewed these guys, the members. Yeah, you know, it's pretty good. I mean, that's, that's in that moment when you're sitting around um, thinking, you know, what's a good name for our band? You know, and, and you know, I mean, if it has at least one, one entendre, most bands are only up to a single entendre, you know, then, uh, then that's good enough. You know, that's pretty good, the members. The, the, you know, it's funny, I, I'm thinking, as, I, as I was asking you that, I'm thinking back to talking to them uh, my uh, my early uh, 80s, mid 80s was spent uh, covering pop music and doing a lot of interviews and magazines and stuff. And and I remember make a lot of money doing that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? It, maybe you relate to this. I did not make a lot of money doing it. However, it set the table for everything that came. So I was great. Yeah, it, it was a great but, way to break in sideways into, into some kind of journalism and to absolutely learn how to learn how to talk to people and to. I, I got away without getting a degree in journalism. No, it was good. But the members was one of those bands that I did not, I didn't get it. You know, I, I, it was like, it was like years. And I went back and I saw the clip and I went, oh, the members, I get it now. <laughs> it was like I never, just, I was, I was probably thirty years old before I figured out what Queen referred to. I mean, and you mentioned. <laughs> ACDC, yeah. it reaches a point where it doesn't matter that it, 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 it might suggest that you might go either way. It, well, think of those poor guys. I mean, I, you know, every, we all love ACDC. I mean, let's, if there's anything yeah. that oh. every human being that's ever listening to this show and, and, every, and most of the people that are walking the planet, everybody loves ACDC. Think of those poor sad guys when they, you know, like on their third tour of the U.S. when they finally realized that what this meant was that they were bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> uh, and we love them for that, you know. Yeah. Just 
fact is we love the fact that Angus will, you know, there, uh, to this day there's a video on, on YouTube recently of, of, you know, somebody they're playing some hockey rink somewhere, you know, and, and somebody throws a beer bottle at Angus or whatever. Angus, in his little shorts, goes up and punches this guy's lights out. Yeah, <laughs> and then climbs back down and puts the guitar back on, you know. And, and <laughs> it's it's weird how how they're the ones with the with the name ACDC suggesting that, but uh, Judas Priest, <laughs> you know. Anyway, oh, you want to hear one of the okay? You want to hear one of the greatest rock and roll moments? I've, you know, I've, I obviously I've seen yeah. this since I was a wee tiny little boy, but one of the greatest. Rock and roll moments in my life. I was married for a number of years to a famous uh, musician, and, and our agent is a wonderful guy who has a wonderful uh, agent's name, named Marty Diamond. And, and, and he wanted us to go see he wanted us to go see Irving Plaza. Uh, they were redone Irving Plaza, and and so forth and so on. So, uh, and his offices were right there, right there. We went and had dinner and um, walked over. Well, Rob Halford, the lead singer from from um, uh, Judas Priest is doing his first solo tour. And I can remember the T-shirts this day. I so wish I'd bought one of these T-shirts. Gosh, dang. You know, I mean, of all the mistakes you make in life. I had an ABBA T-shirt at one point that I bought on tour, but I, on their U.S. tour, but I should have bought this T-shirt. And because it had like a date in L.A., a date in New York, and a date in in Berlin, as I remember, on his solo tour. But um, in any case... You come up the stairs at Irving Plaza, and there were these dudes from Long Island, you know, with their kind of, um, you know, Iron Maiden cut off jean jackets, and they had, you know, these guys that have got these, these got these Judas Priest T-shirts, you know, that have been washed 300 times, and they've been saving them for, you know, I mean, they well, and they all wear them to the show, you know, and they were coming down the stairs, and I guess since I can, I I can carry on cursing as I've already been doing, right? I, it's no problem if I curse, Sorry. or. Yeah. Okay. No, you so can, any language. Yeah. Be my guess. Okay. So, 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 well, as I will. Um, but they're coming down the stairs, and I mean, they're boiling down the stairs. And they're fucking Halford. Fuck. You know, I mean, they're just, they're just, they are so pissed. <laughs> you know? And we go up there, and here's Halford, you know, in his baldness or whatever. And, um, and, you know, he's got a, um, He's got a guitar player who, instead of striking heavy metal poses, is striking alt rock poses. At a time, you know, when Nirvana has, you know, destroyed heavy metal and you know that's just over with and everything. So alt rock poses for, uh, for a guitar player are completely different than heavy metal poses. So that's bad. And then got, he's got a uh, an African American bass player who is scared to death. And these guys are up there. I mean, the entire audience is up there, and they are flipping Halford the Bird. You know, and, and they're just going, you fucking faggot, you faggot, because, you know, he has, he has come out of the closet that he's gay. And it's like, yeah. oh, so the guy that you've been worshipping, the guy that's been wearing <laughs> leather shaps all these years, you know, you know, but I'm telling you, it was like one of the greatest rock and roll things I have ever seen in my life. Because, I mean, you talk about an, an electric atmosphere in Halford and, and, and everybody but the bass player who was convinced he was going to be lynched, I know he was convinced he was going to be lynched, <laughs> were just, just leaning into the wind of these guys. I mean, you could, you know, and I mean, you know, these are Long Island dudes that are like, you know, gone nuts, you know. And they're, and they see, they're seeing their entire childhood being ripped asunder as it happens, you know. So, anyway, there we go. <laughs> well, that was, uh, no, listen, I, I remember being in college and, you know, there was always the guys who were like, you know, the Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and, you know, they're so the heavy metal whole thing, and then you find out that, and I don't care if the guy's straight or gay or what he is, but it just seems so uh, <laughs> analogous to what you know what he was what he was leading and doing anyway. Uh, but well, you find some, out that instead of being there's some, there's of some being talk that mate, he's for Christopher Street. Yeah, well, there's some talk that you know that it's not actually Angus that's going to come out, but his brother. So in oh. ACDC. So. <laughs> no, that don't that's that's a joke, everybody. That's, don't don't send me hate mail. Well, I want to throw a couple more names at you before. Uh, yeah, please, please. Uh, before too long, uh, Adam and the Ants. See, that's a pretty great name, you know. Yeah. It's it's catchy. I mean, you know, once again, it it goes back to it's you know, it's all context and memory and what we think of them and everything. I mean, you know, it was kind of goofy, <laughs> you know, but it it had like a you know, it had a thirty second half life where it was like, wow, they're the coolest thing in the world. Oh boy, is that boring? You know, is that weird? You know, yeah, and that's but, fun. Boom. 
Yeah, yeah, boom, it's yeah. over. It's like flash paper or something. It's done, you know. You lit the match and it burnt, you know. But, but you know, and it's, I mean, Adam and the Ants is a pretty good name. Now, is, is there, Bart, is there any more disposable industry on Earth than uh, hop stardom? Well, I would say I would say right now that in the United States, the real estate industry. Um, <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. Um, you know, we can work down from there. It might be banking, you know, and and and, and onward. But um, you know, suddenly the pop music industry looks sort of you know steady as a rock. You know. So, so. <laughs> well, but the reason now the reason I ask is that the names, a lot of the names that we're talking about, and the hundreds and probably thousands of names in the book. It tends to be that you come up with a name, and no matter how good the name is, your career can be over in a heartbeat. You may you may be a one hit wonder. You may not even be a one hit wonder. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you can see that this book was born out of a lot of affection, you know. But I've been around this stuff since I was a mere wee child, and now I'm um, now I'm in a wheelchair living in Saint Petersburg, Florida. Um, oh no, that's me. No, no. Oh, no. oh. Okay. Well, now I'm in, now I'm, I'm horsing around in Paris actually, and as we speak, and it's, it's probably the nicest day that there's been in Paris. And I'm I'm horsing around talking to you on the phone. I should be out there promenading around like Maurice Chevalier. But uh, in any case, um, uh, you know, it's it's yeah. <laughs> thank heaven. Um, but 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 you know, the, the thing about all of this stuff is is that. For most bands, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I've spent my life in amazing, you know, really important concert halls and huge festivals and then in the most funky rock clubs, you know, and you go back in there and, and, you know, and you look at the graffiti on the wall and you realize, oh, I'm really not among the best and the brightest, am I? You know, the graffiti does not speak of, there's not a lot of Nobel Prize winners and, and, um, so, you know, for most bands, their great moment of creativity is that is that third band meeting when they actually agree, whoa, the members. I mean, it has like two meanings. You know, and <laughs> that's right, it. That is that that's, that's, you know, that's, you know, they may write a song or two <laughs> as well, but mostly the great moment for bands of creativity is that, that moment when they consent on their band name. After that, it's all downhill. And so, I mean, and that's emblematic of what their careers are going to look like anyway. But that's um, it, just that's you know, it's one of the, the core rock and roll moments is when when we first decided to name ourselves Shot Down Over Ecuador Junior. <laughs> that, that, that's a pretty good one. I like that one. That's one of my favorites. I, that was a band. That was a New Orleans band, um, and and I, I used to live in New Orleans, but they were around before I lived there, and it was just like. No way. That's I just from the time I ever heard that band name was like that's 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 just one of the greatest band names ever. Um you know, I'm just thumbing through the book and I, I what what let me see what chapter this is. This is the uh, I guess this is the free beer chapter. Uh, and uh some great names here. Uh I don't know how I didn't bring this up before, the butthole surfers, uh Vic Morrow's head. Oh my god, was that the most I, I, that, I think even more than the Dead Kennedys, one of the w- most distressing band titles. But yet, uh, you know, well, remember the thing about remember the thing about the Butthole Surfers was that, I mean, when the Butthole Surfers came forward and began to tour voraciously in in their van with their dog, who was named Mark Farner, um, um, <laughs> they you know they they uh, they would they would arrive into your town. And and then the copy editors at the local newspaper or the local alternative weekly, who were basically probably on their side, you know, or or not, had to figure out, you know, because they, you know you couldn't say the butthole surfers, you couldn't say butthole, so so they it was always like the asterisk surfers, or you know, the, I mean, or the butt asterisk surfers. Or the asterisk hole surfers, or you know, and, and so the problem with asterisk hole surfers is it's too much like asshole surfers, you know. So it's so there was like you know there was like a ten year period where they couldn't you know put the words butthole, and you know in the early days of spin that was you know I mean they were one of our bands that we you know that we championed you know and and right. so it was kind of I mean that's how things have changed. It was pretty amazing that you could pick up a national 
a nationally distributed glossy magazine, and on the cover of that magazine, it might say, Butthole Surfers. I mean, first of all, we were insane to put the Butthole Surfers on the cover, but, but beyond that, uh, the mere fact that we said their name was, was a big deal. So you kids, remember that we fought and died for your freedom. <laughs> and and we salute you for that. Thank you. Chris. Yeah, thanks a lot <laughs> for all the good it did. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Now, how much? I mean, how long did it take you to put this book together? Is this something you were you were working on on the side for a while, or you just? Yeah, it was a side. It was obvious. That you can tell it's just totally. It was a totally side project. I had a, you know, I spent like almost you know 15 years on the road with my ex-wife and and various other bands and musicians and the like, and and all over the world and. Um, kind of had to set my own writing career aside, although I always had kind of major historical and sort of literary projects. Where you can see how literary this particular book is, and oh, yeah. um, and so I had to set almost everything aside because you know, you, you know, you're living on the road with musicians, and they will eat your your manuscripts and stuff, you know, and and um, but basically you go backstage, you know, I'd be sitting around there, and you know, in a state of absolute exhaustion and. There are these, you know, there, I mean, every every dressing room of every ratty rock club in Hamburg, Germany, and Dunedin, New Zealand, and uh, Cleveland, Ohio, has this long list of, you know, somebody with a, somebody who's gotten a hold of a Sharpie that shouldn't have and has written their name and crossed out all the other names and, and you know, so forth and so on. It explains whose band is really, really, really rules and whose band really sucks. You know, and you can't, you know, in the long run, you just sit there and you go, Nerf Herder, you know, or whatever the name of the band is that you've never heard of before at that moment, and go, that's a great band name, you know, and then, and then, and then, and then you're, and then even more so, you're just struck by how stupid, I mean, like, stupid with three, three O's in it, um, the, you know, the, the stupid band names are. It's like, wow, you know. How did you how did you come up with that one? Uh, I don't know. Um I you know, I tell you what I'd like to do, Bart, is I wanna I wanna have you come back on when we can talk about band stories, we can talk about spin. And I, I gotta share, I, I, I actually I, I made a note of this. Uh and I, unfortunately we don't have enough time today to go into this, but uh, Bart, Bart's done this, this this book that's a lot of fun. It's Battle of the Band Names, the best and worst band names ever. And the sub subtitle is and all the brilliant, colorful, stupid ones in between. However, he is also uh, people know him who have read him in Spin and Vogue and Details and other places uh, for his really cool writing style. It's a little stream of conscious. It's a little off the wall. And I, he there's a uh, there's a I've got a can you hear that? There's, there's lawn equipment going right in the background. Here, if, um, if you want, if you want, if it'll help, I'll turn on my little farsi piece of organ that has like a little um, Italian drum guy in it, and, and it'll make like really that'll <laughs> make comp- competing noises to your lawn guy, you know. And, uh, well, <laughs> there. For, okay, yeah. fortunately he's moved away. So there's a. Uh, if, if, <laughs> if you go to Bart's uh, uh, blog, it's a. Uh, uh, HTTP colon slash slash Bart Bull. There's no www. It's Bart uh, just Bull. Just like a Bart Bull. Solid. What? Just look up Bart Bull. It'll you know it'll just it'll look come up up Bart Bull. All right, BartBull.blogspot.com. Anyway, there's this great profile. He's posted this. It's this from several years ago. Uh, it was done for Vogue, and it's a profile of Jimmy Stewart. And I know there's a lot of people are going to hear this who don't even know who Jimmy Stewart is anymore. But he was a, a great American actor. Anyway, I just want to read the first paragraph from this and encourage you to go read the rest of it at Bart's uh, website, and you can also check out all of his other stuff. He seems to post almost daily. This is, uh, this is the lead. I hope it do it, I do it justice. Um, the milkman is making his delivery. Eggs and butter and quarts of milk stacked neatly in his wire basket. There was a time when salty jokes were made about milkmen and their midday deliveries, back in the days when wives stayed home alone and lonely while husbands marched off to work. But those days are gone, long gone, like the milkmen themselves gone and nearly forgotten, except here at Jimmy Stewart's house where the milkman's white truck is parked in the driveway. That's as much as I'm going to read. Let me just say it's a, it's a, it's a great – I don't care if you know Jimmy Stewart or not. You need to read this story. It's just, it just uh, it crackles. You know? It's the kind of thing you're going to come away from and go, wow, I've got to go back and read that again. And Thanks, Bob. But, that, you know, I, just, I, I would just say that I do think that something about Jimmy Stewart resonates in the culture so deeply that I think yeah. that – 
you know, I think we can almost presume that uh, even a, a young and fairly cultural illiterate person that we would look down our noses at if we so choose. I would like to think we would, and I, clearly you're not that kind of person, and I'm not either. But I just think they kind of would know who Jimmy Stewart is. It's weird, you know. I think he resonates in a really profound way. Absolutely. Even now, and he's gone, and most you know, younger people don't know him, and you, know, you really have to beat them over the head to introduce a guy like that to them. But it's just, I, you know, it, this could be about anyone. Uh, that's kind of my point here is that this could be about anyone. It's the writing style that you just got to gotta go and read and, and appreciate. And, uh, and Bart, I just want you to come back, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll set aside an hour, and we'll talk about uh, – uh, we can talk about spin, and we can talk about more. Well, I'll, get, I'll squeeze more band stories out of you, and um, I, I hope you. I hope you'd be game to come back. Oh yeah, you know I've got a, actually I've got a lot of things going on in my sleeve. It's just a matter, but I'm 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 having too much of a good time wandering around Paris. It's just it's hard to not. Uh, it's really funny for me to be a. Um, uh, fitting the, sun, the, the the hilarious cliche model of the American expatriate in Paris, but uh, American <laughs> expatriate writer of all things in Paris, but I never, because I'm so ultra American, you know, that it's funny for me, but it's, you know, I'm having too good a time, but it's, in fact, I've got a bunch of things coming forward that are far more, far more poncy and literate and, and, um, and, and annoying than this book, so. Well, I will catch up to you via email. We'll we'll set up a date yeah, to come back about, about some some other things. And uh, I want to yeah, I want to put okay. in a I want to put in a pimp for your Will Eisner book that I haven't yet read, but I'm <laughs> amazed that that it exists. And, and, and so. well, I will send you a copy of that, as I promised via email. Yeah. I, I will send you I will send you a copy of that. We can talk in that in that that other in, that next time around. We'll talk. We can talk Will Eisner and protocols cool. and Henry Henry Ford and and all kinds of stuff. That would be great. Um, cool. So let me let me tell everybody. Uh, you can order Bart Bull's book, uh, Battle of the Band Names, the best and worst band names ever, at great bookstores everywhere, or online at MrMedia.com, Amazon.com also, and check out his blog. As I mentioned, uh, it's Bart Bull, B-A-R-T-B-U-L-L dot blogspot dot com for more information. And uh, Bart, uh, <laughs> it was it was a very quick uh, quick show, and it was a lot of fun having you. And I'll, I'll look forward oh. to getting you back where we can spend even more time. But Thanks, I know man. there's a lot of good stuff to get there. My pleasure. Okay. Good luck with the book, and uh, and, and, and uh, good know, luck on your on your on your college radio show. That uh, you are still doing that, I presume. <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> in the year of college. <laughs> you know, you know, somebody's <laughs> got to get those new wave bands over the net, man. <laughs> Son, drunk, stupid, and what is it? No way to go through. Anyway, um, <laughs> hey Bart, thanks for being on the show today. I really All right. appreciate it. Talk to you later, man. That was a lot of pleasure to see you. Take care. Adios. Thanks. Bye-bye. And for more uh, music-related interviews, uh, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with uh, Gene Simmons of KISS, Billy Powell, Leonard Skittard, uh, Bart's old friend, Legs McNeil, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites. Whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, MySpace, Pointer Online, Friendster, Orkut, Bebo, High Five, Tag, Multiply, Zanga, Yahoo, NetVibes, Digital Journal, Podcast, Pickle, Vox, Folio, MediaFly, Hotfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. Did that with one breath. Stop that. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. 